breath of fresh air. Welcome. To John G T V And I am your host, the El Capitan John G. And today we have here for you Arturia. Arturia Mini Brute. Analog synthesizer. If you're new to the channel. This is not for your cell phone, this is not for your laptop, this is not for your tablet. You're going to have to put your headphones on, your hi-fi deck. Because this here is life deck. Yes, today we're going to review the Arturia Mini Brew. Let me just say, man. Here? We're going to get into this uh, mini brew because there's some things about it that I like. There's some things about it that I do not like. I mean, you know, Arturia, let me just stop for a second because Arturia, man, y'all be killing it. And I feel like, you know, some kind of way having some negative to say, but truth of the matter is I do have some negative to say about this uh, instrument. Um, for me, the thing that I am not a fan of is the filter. Like I said in the previous video, the filter on this thing. I can't get it to uh, it just won't do that at all. Something they've been getting. Yeah, the cook are ain't. This filter is a home run foul ball for the game winner. For the game winner. But it faded outside the line. I don't like the filter, but however, they gave filter. ADSR, and this is the only synthesizer that I have and actually seen that has the filter with the ADSR. Um, I started playing around with that, and I like that. that I like. like, I like that a lot. I like how, um, okay, on camera, you can see, like, the little lights right there lighting up. I'm gonna get my hand in there. Right there, the light lit up. Now, right there, that is the Basically, the uh, envelope generator. Um, synthesis people, if y'all can help me with this, because I'm, it says amplification envelope. And I'm, uh, I'm assuming that this is another way of saying envelope generator. So if you could just, you know, let me know. Yeah, yo, John G, you're right on that. That is correct. You are thinking correctly. Um, or if I am wrong, please tell me why I'm wrong on that so that we all can be uh, on the same page of, of, of correctness. But yeah, so... Like I said, the filter has ADSR. That's dope. Oh, the light. The light, I've taken that. You see the light, that means it's 
sound is being affected by that. So right now you can see the light comes on. You can see how the amplifier, the envelope generator, basically the SR on the envelope, is affecting the sound. And at a certain point, you can see where the filter in the SR is actually affecting the sound. I like that because you can kind of get a gauge as to what is actually triggering what you're hearing. So there's some kind of feedback that at first I just, you know, was looking at it like whatever. But after playing playing with it, I actually, that's dope because you can, again, you can kind of get a visual feedback as to what is causing the sound change that you're listening to. Um, outside of that, let's just go ahead and just turn everything down. Right now, we just got the filter going through. Now you can just play the filter by itself. Right now we have nothing. Excuse me. I'm gonna turn everything uh, to the left. All of the oscillators, the uh, filter I have all the way open. The resonance all the way open. I have the keyboard tracking off. The envelope speed too fast. That does make a difference. The mode for the different filter switches for me, I just again, I'm not, a, I am not a fan of this filter. I, I do like the functionality of the ADSR on the filter, but outside of that, in comparison to what I've seen out there, it's just you know, definitely ain't cord. So, but it is what it is. So, and the micro boot is, is definitely better. Um, but they have you know bypass, uh, low pass, bypass, high pass, and then. NTCH is that note change? I don't know. I just made that up real quick. I don't know what that means. That means notch, but NTCH note change like that might be what that could mean. Um, this brute factor is interesting because it actually has more brute when I put it in certain spots. Like you would think it'll be like right there. Like it's quiet. I got it all the way turned up. When you turn it down. You get more characteristics coming through, which I thought was kind of interesting. And it makes me think of what Flux over at Flux with it said. I heard him say when he did his um, review of this instrument, he made a statement about learning your synth and knowing the little uh, spots in which, you know, will make it sound a certain kind of way. And like I said, I found it interesting that on the Brute Factor, on the Mini Brute, that it actually has more characteristics when you turn it up from full. So if you can see right there, it's all the way up, up 100%. And right there at about what, 75, it starts to get a little bit more characteristics coming through. So I, um, I find that interesting. Um, so right now, again, we're just hearing basically the filter because no oscillators coming through. So now I'm bringing in the sub oscillator. I just bring in this uh, uh, ultra saw tube, ultra saw. with oh wait a minute I'm tripping I gotta cut them up first so I guess the mixer section this would be like your volume right the volume from low to high and this is this would be how much of that particular waveform that you want to dial in so it gives you two levels of control the volume and also how much of it you want Sounds like that. I mean, I like. It. 
Now, the reason why I'm a little perplexed right now is because I'm trying to figure out why was the note sustained right there when the release is all the way down. I can't explain to you why that was. I had the, uh, the, the uh, refrigerator on, so I'm wondering if that's what's triggering the sound. But again, this is where my um, ignorance of synthesis is, is going to be shining because I can't explain to you why this is happening right now. Um, but this would be a part of learning your instrument. Uh, I'll have to figure out why that happened. And at some point I will learn. Yeah, so at because of the steps, at certain steps it's hmm. Maybe that's because of the rate of the LFO. basically makes it non-playable so I don't even know why they gave it so much um, of a circuitry that makes it where it's unusable but you can't even cut that up you gotta cut it at uh, what would that be 50% basically because this is this goes from this is zero and this is a hundred and then this is zero and this is a hundred negative so you put it at 50 that's about as high as you can go on the other phone app because when you go past that it hear how it just like you don't even hear the notes are gone arpeggiator off because if I had the arpeggiator on you're not going to hear all of that all of the niblets at the end all you're going to hear is just the beginning part of it. 
those of you who don't understand um when you have the arpeggiator on there again there are certain characteristics of your synthesizer will not be noticed because you have to in order to experience the release you have to have it off so that you can actually hit it release it to get all of those nipples so if you're thinking how is this i don't how how would i use this this is your uh, sound sculpting tool. This is what this is for you. This is how you use it. You take this and you craft. You use this as your sample source. You hook this up to your sampler. And so if you're a person like, well, I don't play keyboards. It's not about, I don't play keyboard either. I'm not a keyboardist. But I can hook this, hook this up, craft a gazillion sounds out of it, and then build my beat from there. So um, this is how you should be looking at synthesizers as just a place for you to scope your sounds to make sounds um for those of you who have any interest in it and, and as a layering tool so don't i'm not saying don't sample yeah go ahead and sample but then maybe you want to layer it with you know something like this a tool like this so for those of you who can't i can't i can't like, Yeah. <laughs> 
So again, back to what I was saying before about uh, sampling this. You craft your sound and you sample this and then you build the beat from there. Um, that little last three minutes I was trying to basically just load up a, a some more playable sound that a keyboard would find himself playing. This is monophonic because I, yeah, I can't do chords with it so you have to, you have to sample and uh, uh, make chords a different kind of way with it that's a that's how you can turn your monophonic synthesizer or monophonic sound into a chord is just sample it and once you get it sampled go ahead and make your chord out of that um, that's the one thing about polyphonic that i i'm having a hard time liking because after playing with the monologue i want to play with the monologue and um to be honest with you i was like the mini log, I know it's the functionality of it is dope, but it just doesn't sound as good as the monologue. Look, this is disrespectful. This ain't even about them. I'm just saying. Uh, take this to craft your sound. So this is Arturia, the mini brew. Um, I don't even did I come with some. I didn't even come with come, any kind of order. Did I just? This is a review. I'm all over the place. This is my thoughts on it. It's rough around the edges as usual. John G TV, John G style. Um, hopefully, I've given you a, a a better look. Again, like I said before, you put this with all the other thousands of of uh, searches, and you just add this into the pile and formulate your decision off of that. So hopefully, this will give you a, a better insight. Again, if you if you're not a synthesis you're an amateur a beginner i wouldn't lead you here i would say get the micro before getting the mini because the mini just i feel like it uh, requires a little bit more knowledge and even then i don't know that it's as dope as the micro but we'll get into that later right now this is the mini brute john g john g tv Um, just a quick synopsis. Uh, what is it? One, two, three different, six oscillators. One oscillator, but six different types. You have a sub, uh, no, I'm sorry, you have four different. You have ultra, uh, saw, you have ultra, um, saw amount, you have ultra saw rate. So you really have just the three, right? Ultra, post width, and the metalizer. You just have the amount of each. Then you have a sub oscillator as well, as well as noise. You also have audio in. So you have sub oscillator. You have uh, ultra saw, pulse width, uh, metalizer, noise, and audio in. You have ADSR on both the filter and the amp. That filter, I'm not a fan of it. However, I do love the ADSR on the filter. Brute factor, there is 
Uh, I like the brute factor, but you have to find your spot, find your sweet spots. Whatever, definitely with this sense, there are just um, spots that I just can't explain to you why it's there and not as you go up. You would think it would get better as you go up, but sometimes if you dial it at a certain point, you would get more characteristic. So that's uh, pretty much all I got for you on this right now. Um, I'm not even certain I'm going to break this down into sections per se. This might just be it. I'm going to go ahead and include this uh, in one shot because I can't really drool too much on it um, as far as a review. But it will be put on display. Most certainly, we're going to go ahead and play with it some more. But for now, this is John G. Signing off. Fading to back. Respectfully. As I my impersonation of Nick on Sonic Talk as he plays a little riff at the end. That ain't John DTV.